Let's take a look at example four from section 6.3. This time they want us to construct the 99% confidence interval for the population proportion and to interpret the results. In a survey of 4,013 US adults, 722 of them say that they have seen a ghost. Let's calculate the 99% confidence interval for the true proportion of all people that we believe have seen a ghost. To start with, we want to find the point estimate for p hat and q hat. p hat is x divided by n. The number of people that do believe they've seen a ghost was 722 divided by our sample size, which was 4013. That gives us a p value of 0 0.180. To find q hat, we do one minus p hat, one minus 1.80 would give us 0.820. Before we try to use a z-score, we have to ensure that the distribution of this binomial would be normal. And that's done by checking to make sure that p hat times n and q hat times n should be both greater than or equal to five. Sure enough, if you take our sample size, which is 4,013, multiply it by p hat, that's gonna be bigger than five. Same thing will happen too if you take the sample size n, multiply it by q hat, that will also be greater than or equal to five. So we will be able to construct our confidence interval by using the methods in this section. The next thing we would need to compute would be the z-score that we're gonna need on our formula for E. Recall the formula for the margin of error for a population proportion is E equals its zc times the square root, and on the inside it's p hat times q hat divided by n. We are looking for the 99% confidence interval. So to find the critical z-score, we would do second distribution, go down to inverse norm. The tail area is one minus c divided by two. One minus 0.99 divided by two would be 0 0.005. Hit enter. That would produce a Z critical value of 2.576. Once we have Z critical, we can plug Z critical in, plug in P hat, Q hat, N. Don't forget that that fraction under square root. If you do this computation, we will get a margin of error of 0 0.016, which means that our confidence interval for our proportion is gonna be P hat minus E to P hat plus E p hat was 1.80, so we get 0 0.180 minus 0 0.016 to 0 0.80 plus 0 0.016, which gives us an interval of 0.164 to 0 0.196. So we believe that the, with 99% confidence, that the true proportion of all US adults that believe they've seen a ghost is somewhere between 0.164 and 0.196. We also could have found this interval by using our one prop Z interval command. If I go to stats, go over to tests, go down to option A, that's one proportion, one prop Z interval. I would first enter X, which is the number that I believe they have seen a ghost. That's 722. My sample size was 4,013. And for this problem, we wanted to do a 99% confidence interval. Go ahead and hit enter. And our confidence interval produces to three places 0.164 to 0.19, that would round up to six. Let's take a look at the next one and I'm just gonna use the, the calculator for this. Let's construct a 90% confidence interval for the true proportion of US adults that believe the Red Sox will win the World Series. So we have the point estimate P hat would be the number that do believe that they'll win the World Series. That's 184 divided by the size of our sample, that's 891, which gives us 0 0.207. Q 
Q hat is going to be 1 minus P hat, which is 0.793. We should check, and it will still be the case that if you take P hat times N, 0.207 times 891, and also 0 0.793 times 891, both of those would be bigger than or equal to 5. So we can go ahead and construct our interval. You can either use the formula for E, or I'm going to do stat tests. One prop Z interval. This time our X value is 184. Our sample size is 891. And we want the 90% confidence interval, which would be 0 0.90. If we hit enter, that will give us a proportion of 0.184 to 0.229. So everything matches up. This one just off by, by a tad. It's off by one tenth hundred by one thousandth. And that's just simply due to a little bit of round off error. The upper bound matches perfectly. This would round to 0 0.229, which will happen on occasion because of the, the rounding of the z-score here. But essentially that has given us the correct 90% confidence interval. The takeaway is that we are 90% confident that the true proportion of all U.S. adults that do believe the, World, the Red Sox will win the World Series the next year is between 0.184 and 0.229. The last thing we're going to look at in this section is finding the sample size required to achieve a certain level of confidence for a given margin of error. This formula is nothing more than the margin of error formula from above E, but solved for the variable N. If you algebraically take, and those of you that are good at algebra, it's a, something you should try out on your own. See if you can recreate this formula. Take the above equation for E and solve it for N. What we would find is that N is going to be equal to P hat Q hat times the fraction ZC divided by E squared, where P hat and Q hat are our preliminary estimates for the uh, proportion P and the not proportion Q. ZC is our critical score, and then E is our margin of error. Like we've seen in previous sections, when it comes to this particular formula for N, it will not follow the standard rounding rules. You will always round N up to the next um, highest integer, so always round it up. Another thing that will happen that will sometimes occur is you'll read a problem that involves finding a minimal sample size for a proportion and it might seem like they don't give you enough information to get the problem started. If we do not have a preliminary estimate for p hat and q hat, then we're going to make the assumption that both p hat and q hat are equal to 0.5 or a half. This is kind of the, the values for the two of them that will help to guarantee that it's the minimum value of n. So this is something you kind of have to remember, especially as it, you go into the next exam. When you have no preliminary estimate, we are allowed to assume that p hat and q hat are both going to be 0.5. Let's take a look at example six. Suppose we missed to estimate with 95% confidence the population proportion of US adults who say that chocolate is their favorite ice cream. We want our, our estimate to be accurate within 5%. So in a roundabout way, they're trying to tell us that the margin of error is 5%, which is 0 0.05 of the population proportion. And suppose that no preliminary estimate is available, find the minimal sample size needed. Well, if no minimal sample size, excuse me, if no preliminary estimate is available, then that's precisely when we use p hat and q hat equal to 0.5. So in my formula, I'm going to plug in 0.5 for p hat, 0.5 for q hat. We know e is 0.05. And then I can find uh, the zc the same way we've been doing. You do inverse norm, 1 minus 0.95 divided by 2. And that z score, we've seen it a bunch of times now, for the 95% confidence level, the z critical value is 1.960. If we work this all the way out, this would give us an N that's equal to 384.16. Three, 
Again, that, because we have some kind of a decimal value here, that's going to have to get rounded up. That will round up and bump up to 385. So for this problem, to obtain a 95% confidence level, we would need a sample size of at least 385 individuals. Let's rework the problem, but suppose we actually have a preliminary study with information that says a sample proportion of individuals found that 27% or 0.27 say that chocolate was their favorite ice cream flavor. So here we do have a preliminary estimate for the sample uh, for the population proportion. Our p hat value would be 27%, which is 0.27. Our q hat is always 1 minus p hat, so 1 minus 0.27 would be 0.73. And now we can plug that into our formula for n. n is equal to p hat q hat times the fraction zc over e squared. We're still doing 95% confidence level, so the zc is still 1.960. Same margin of error, 0.05. Don't forget that you have to square that fraction. And this would work out to be 302.87, which we would bump up to 303. So with the preliminary information, we would need a sample size of 303 individuals to create a 95% confidence interval. In terms of comparing the difference between part A and part B, by having preliminary information ahead of time, that reduces the size of the sample that's going to be needed for the same level of confidence. If you don't have that preliminary information, then you've got to have a larger sample size in order to guarantee the same level of confidence in our interval estimates.